what's up fellow lords of gaming welcome to a very different type of uh uh video um today what i wanted to do is just kind of review the scuff and vision pro i finally got mine um and have been playing around with it and i think the majority of people that are trying to pick up this controller are mostly trying to pick it up to play like call of duty modern warfare um apex or games like that so that way they can map some of the movement functions I definitely think it's going to be more beneficial to have this controller if you are planning on doing something like that, uh, playing those type of games, um, especially like Modern Warfare 2, where movement is very heavy. Being able to access those type of movement commands uh, on the move and still keep your hand, your thumbs on the thumbsticks is going to be highly important. Right. So that's the reason why those four paddles in the back are really, really good. A um, couple of quick things to jump off in the very beginning of the video i've noticed over on the scuff for forum that a lot of people are having problems with the software and if they're not aware and i think most people who have pcs and probably have like rgb lights and you know are used to iq software they know how trashy and shitty it is so um and and it's going to be something that you're going to deal with like i hate to say it, it's if you're looking for improvement from iq to improve the software it ain't gonna happen they can promise you the win but it ain't gonna happen so i want to bring up the software this is essentially what the software looks like inside of the um inside your iq suite um there's gonna be a couple of things that you want to make sure that you do right off the right off the jump tip if you are updating iq or or if you have an iq piece already installed guess what every time that iq doesn't update you have the potentiality for something to go wrong and for you need to do a complete reinstall of the game uh, excuse me of the uh, software so what does that mean that means you're gonna need to do two things that i like to tell people to do um that i have to do because i have lights that are controlled on my i have like corsair light uh fans and you know rgbs that i have to control through the software what does that mean that typically means i need to go ro roll over to my c drive I need to come inside my C drive and I need to delete the Corsair photo, uh, folders. Is that the end of it? No. After uninstalling the program from the add or remove programs, guess what? You're going to need to uninstall the folders from the local disk. Is that enough? No, it's not. You're going to need to actually go into your regedit, the registry edits right here, and you're going to have to delete the IQ, uh, excuse me, the uh, IQ software from here as well. So typically there's going to be folders inside the software reg edit for your current user and your local machine. And you're going to want to delete the Corsair folder inside each of those. You're going to make your way over to the Corsair software package suite uh, on their page and then load a brand new install. Nine times out of 10, I tend to find that this works relatively well for me if I'm having any sort of issues with the IQ software that, you know, I can't figure out what's going on. Hate to tell you, but that's what it is. It is what it is. I, I have given up on expecting IQ to fix it. I'm talking about I've dealt with things as my lights not working when the machine is up and my work, my lights only working when it goes down. So I want to jump into another bit of a tip for you. Uh, that I think most players are probably going to be uh, not wise to. And that's how IQ defines its usage when it's on and when it's off in use. A, I don't find the software to necessarily be that big of a CPU load on my computer. Um, it really doesn't raise the CPU usage. So you can run the IQ software in the background. You can also run it from the system tray or minimize. Like if you close out of IQ, it should automatically end up in your system tray down here. But that's essentially what it is, right? <clears throat> now, the software is also confusing because it really doesn't tell you like a couple of things that like mappings and hardware mappings. So, for instance, mappings are things that you're going to use or setups that you're going to use when the IQ software is up and running, whether it's in the system tray, whether it's minimized, uh, minimized or whether it's just running in a background, however you have that. That's what mappings are going to be done for. Hardware mappings. Those are specific mappings that are done specifically to the device. So the onboard device, meaning the IQ software is not running and it needs those. Notice specifically with the Scuff and Vision that you do not have access to some of the mappings like the G, the G keys. Um, you don't have access to those, the, the, 
the, the D-pad keys, the uh, action keys, you don't have access to those when the IQ software is not running and you just have hardware mappings. You basically have access to the side, ax uh, side action uh, buttons and then the rear four paddles. That's essentially what you have, right? Now, another thing that's really silly to me is that IQ doesn't really have a way for you to just inside the control save some general presets. Like they have some presets that are available, shooter, battle royal, racing and stuff like that. But you're not able to put your own custom presets that basically preload the software in there for you. Like you can't do that. What you can do, however, is you have the ability to control profiles that are loaded inside here. So, for instance, you can see here that I have Modern Warfare 3 uh, COD loadout and I've got Black Desert PC as a loadout as well. So that gets over the profiles. Now, what this means, however, though, is that this is the profile for the entirety of IQ. It's not just the profile for the goddamn controller, right? So like if you go to your device settings, you'll notice that there's a IQ uh, onboard memory right here for the uh, for the controller itself. And you can save any one of these directly to the mappings as long as it's just going to be for those specific device buttons that I showed you were available to you when you go to hardware mappings, right? Otherwise, what you end up doing then is you end up having to control all your lightings and all your other configurations based on the profile setting that you have here for the IQ suite overall, instead of just having a profile suite for the controllers. Pretty stupid, I know. I'm not a fan of it myself, but it is what it is. This is how you're going to basically control. I haven't found a way around this. By the way, Corsair Scuff website, I think they have the most shittiest manual ever for the controller, period. But that's what it is. So what I want to show you inside here is basically like the setup basically for Modern Warfare 3 versus a setup for like something like an RPG inside the game, uh, like like Black Desert Online. So starting out with like, you know, Call of Duty, which I think most people purchasing this controller will use. Really, really, really easy setups inside of here. There's going to be some actions and things like that that I think people are plenty confused about. They saw Iceman Isaac's video and was like, yo, how did he set it up so that way slide was always available to him? A dive was always available to him. You know, those type of actions inside there. This is going to be completely dependent on how you want to set up your controller as well. But I'm going to show you what you need to do. If you notice, there's no way that you're just going to map the controller and just have slide available to you without having to make some type of mapping changes inside of Call of Duty. So for instance, if you type slide inside your advanced configurations, you'll notice that there's nothing listed in here for slide and dive. So what I had to do was I had to map a key specifically to go to slide dive. And then you notice like, for instance, mantle doesn't have a key at all either inside of it. You have to find a key that's specifically being unused so that way it doesn't overwrite one of the other skills or run into some type of configuration issue there with another skill trying to use that same key and basically assign the key there. What that's going to allow you to do then is you'll be able to go to the controls and you'll be able to say, OK, well, what I want to do is I want to slide. So I have my slide set up here. Uh, it's associated to the P4 uh, button and you can easily just go to that and you can click on it, remap and then just set it to a keystroke. And the keystroke for me would be you uh, if that's what you chose to. If you want to do dive, then you can set the dive. So that way the dive is going to the keystroke for the uh, L or whatever you set it up for. And that way is just dive. Otherwise, what you have here is the crouch and slide key, which is C. Now, obviously, you can crouch when you're in movement and you can just press C and map it to one of those. But then you're in the situation dependent, right, where it's a crouch or it's a slide. You have to be in the movement regardless. Like there's still, you know, things that you have to do, basically. So, like, for instance, you see inside here, my jump key is bound to my P3 key over here. I don't really jump around. I'm not a bunny hopper, but um you have that key and it's just set up as a keystroke key. You can pretty much identify which keys are set up to what based on like their uh, their icons. So like the A, B, X, Y keys, they look a little bit different than what your keystrokes look like or the keypad. And that's essentially it. Like that's that's the measure of what it does. Now, IQ will allow you to save these settings into your library. However, beware that when you run into the software needed to be uploaded or updated, excuse me, because something's going wrong with the software, which I promise you eventually will when they do an update, 
yeah, yeah, you're going to probably want to delete that temp file that has these uh, library settings inside of them. And then you'll end up having to redo them. That's why, like, typically for like these controllers, when I was using Rewazd uh, or DS4, I would have to go in here and basically like map out my actions for what it was. So that way I knew exactly what my settings were going to be essentially for those. Right. So like I'll give you a best, a best, best kind of scenario here outside of Call of Duty. Right. So the controls work pretty fine inside there. Um, like, you know, your slide and everything works. I don't have a way to show you my uh, my my actual uses of it. But trust me, it works. It's not it's not a really big issue. And <clears throat> So we'll quit out of this game. And what I want to do is I'm going to pull up Black Desert online for you. And I want to basically be able to show you inside Black Desert the same control layouts. And it gets now I purchased this controller, not necessarily for Call of Duty. I play I, I, I guess I say you could say I play a significant amount of Call of Duty, but really I, I, I prefer it for MMOs. It allows me instead of having to use mouse and keyboard, which, you know, for a game like Black Desert or for any MMO that you're grinding really heavy. Um, can be a little bit like taxing because you're just sitting at the keyboard hunched over, uh, wrist on the keyboard and it kind of just gets like, you know, it can get, it, it can get tedious, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, like, I basically have a setup inside here for, uh, the specifically for, uh, for black desert. So I can simply go over here, click on this one. It changes my loadouts. And now I have a bunch of different loadouts for all of the keys. And you can see basically how I have them set up, right? Is essentially like I have a B key, which is mimicking the, the F key on the keyboard. I have the jump key, which is uh, mimicking the A button on the controller. And then I have a bunch of other keystrokes also set up. So on the G keys, for instance, I'm using it for inventory, questing, processing, mapping uh, for the map and for the Black Spirit as well. I'm not using this to map anything for like... Uh, like streaming or anything like that. You can do that where you can set it up for individual key binds outside of that as well. Like you can be like, hey, yeah, you know, I'm going to set it up so that way, hey, this key bind could go to like, you know, pulling up some type of stream. Like I'm not using it for that because realistically, like you're going to jump to your keyboard and you're going to press that button, right? Or more than likely, you've got an Elgato stream, stream labs or something like that device and you're going to press that or something like that. You might have foot pedals or something like that. If you're that much into streaming, this ain't what you're using this for. So I'm tying it to specific actions in games. So for instance, I'm using my side action buttons for health pots and I'm using uh, for and for mana pots. And then you can see on the back, I'm basically using those for different things as well. Now I am using um, the, uh, excuse me, I am using uh, Black Spirit's uh, mouse, uh, you know, gamepad UI instead of using the, the um, what do you call it? instead of using the um, the keyboard and mouse layout, mostly because there's still a lot of functions that happen inside the game that I'm pretty just too lazy to probably spend the time mapping out. But with as many controls, 23 on the uh, gamepad that's available to you, it's not that you can't do it. Like, I mean, it really, you could map everything out, like up to escape and be, and basically get all that stuff going in. But it's completely up to you, like how you do that. But the really cool part about it is I think for like an ARPG, I used to use um, mice with the, um, I guess we could just call them RPG mice or whatever, where they had like the full set of 12 buttons on the on the side. And so that way I could basically use or mimic all of those. Right. And it was it was pretty cool. But with. Um, with this, I now can like change things up. Like, so for instance, my right thumb pulls out my weapon inside of in, in, in the game. And then I basically have like the setup. So that way, like, hey, these are the left triggers and things like that. If I need to use a pot, then I can use a pot. If I need to use a monopot, then I can use a monopot. Uh, my jump button is basically mapped to like the uh, the back paddles on my controller. Um, like it, it really works basically to just have like access to a whole bunch of things available to you. And it's fairly, fairly decent in terms of like, hey, I, I really want to just have the ability to play the game and make the combos, especially in a game like Black Desert, where, you know, everything's more about the combos than it is about, you know, basically being able to do something else. So it feels really well to be able to do that and just basically play the game off the rip and have a controller in my hand and be able to sit back in my chair and kind of relax and then make my moves. Now, 
some of this doesn't come like just straight up straight forward like if you wanted to basically look at your settings and stuff like that there is going to be some remapping that needs to be done and you may end up need to go inside some of your interfaces and basically change things but basically all i did was go inside like my keyboard hot settings and i could define like okay so you know my special action for e is going to be you know tied to my um left shoulder button um my f is going to be tied to my right trigger back back paddle trigger um those are the type of things that basically allow you to do those so for instance like z is tied to um it's top my rage absorption button is tied to one of the buttons over here my switch weapons so that way i can switch from awakening and succession stances are tied to one of the back buttons those are the type of things that are really easy so that way instead of like for instance you can see here i'm using the mouse right now to basically pull up the menu all right but like if I'm playing the game, I'm not necessarily probably accessing that menu so much. And I might have to go like, hey, I want to pull up my inventory, for instance. Right. And I would have to go, you know, the click on the on the controller, find the inventory and then go here. And that would pull up my inventory. Whereas opposed to that, I can just pull up one of my, you know, G keys and I can pull up exactly, you know, like different things inside there just by pressing the G, the G keys off the off the bat and it's really really easy in that regard because now i can just continue playing makes things a little bit easier but allows me to sit back and just kind of enjoy the game for a little bit maybe in a uh, extended session so that's essentially what you're using the controller for so far i've found the controller pretty nice they've taken the aggression of the ergonomic aggression of the uh xbox elite game pads and they've kind of fused them with the thumbstick layouts and the uh feel of the uh, dual sense controllers the one thing that if i had a complaint about this outside of the iq software which is just trash but i know the iq software is trash and i purchased this with the iq software being knowing that it was going to be trash and i was going to have to work around it it's probably the thumbsticks i think i like the playstation 4 thumbsticks more than i like the uh the scuff and vision thumbsticks they don't feel as like responsive as 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 the the, the dual sense controllers do so it's a little bit weird for me in just that regard the other thing to be aware is that i i i've heard rumor rumor mill that ds4 is going away but what i end up finding out is like a lot of games don't seem to reckon like bdo for instance when i went inside the keybinds i wanted to just map directly to like some of these controllers uh control options by using like the gamepad features but what ends up happening is that the game doesn't recognize these uh, specific um, items, these these additional buttons. So you end up just having to map them to like a keyboard function. So that way you can then map the control to that keyboard function. A little bit of is a little bit of weirdness there, but you can map these these functions overall. And realistically, it's not so bad. So I would just give it a, give it a shot. Um, I did try to use re rewasd. R-E-W-A-S-D, the software, and DS4 to see if it would recognize the controller along with the additional inputs. I don't think DS4 has ever really worked for the scuff controllers. And there is rumor mill that DS4 is going the way of the Dodo, um, meaning like, you know, it's pretty much on its last update. I know v, uh, the VG Vigium bus uh, just released an update, for instance, and that was supposedly the last update. And without that, you really don't have a way to use DS4, so potential is there that that it won't be there as a service. So you end up having to pay for like Rewaz or for um, DSX on Steam. Now, overall, I would say that the controller is pretty solid. You know, um, I don't know for me playing COD that I needed the four back paddle buttons, and you know, in, in, in truth, knowing that, um, I still would have purchased this controller mostly because. I wanted access to a controller that had a lot of buttons. But if I was just using this for Modern Warfare 3, I might have just went with the DualSense Edge controller instead, especially because the DualSense Edge has the ability, like if I end up experiencing any kind of stick drift, I can just purchase the thumb drop, the thumbsticks for 20 bucks and just replace them and, and plug and go. Um, so like it, be be mindful that as you as you really look at this controller, think to yourself, do you really need these many buttons? There's no way you're telling me you need these many buttons if you're playing Call of Duty. 
At most, you need the additional two or four, but that's it. You don't need all the G keys and everything else like that. You're just not going to convince me of that. Like uh, the most half the people purchasing this is not going to need all those buttons. And even the people that, you know, uh, would be using this on pro level don't need all those goddamn buttons. Um, so be mindful of that and then be mindful of the fact, you know, are you basically using the two, the, the two versus four buttons? I really think the two is probably going to do for most people. So that way they can just jump and slide and dive or whatever. So I think the layout of the control is pretty amazing. It's pretty good. So overall, good controller, um, pretty solid. Um, I wish the software was a lot better than what it is. Um, I'm going to set up a bunch of different profiles. So that way, like I can use this with blue stacks and play um, Marvel Future Fight. Um, and set up my own settings, especially because I have so many buttons there. Like it's going to be a pretty easy then for me to just configure buttons and map them. So that way I can run in game and basically have access to a whole bunch of, um, you know, button presses and cues without actually having to use mouse and keyboard inside of there. Doubt it's going to improve my play, any, any, <laughs> but you can use it. I already started doing it and it works pretty well there because it seems to recognize the control buttons inside of them. And basically this does allow you to basically have additional profiles and it doesn't limit you for the profiles. Again, I don't know what all the tiers are about, about having to have IQ software running. It is not that computer intensive. Like having the software basically up is not that intensive. Like I pretty much put the put the things in. And when I know what game I'm playing, I switch between the profiles. I haven't had any problems switching between the profiles. I don't really run the control wireless versus wired because I'm mostly plugged in because of where I'm sitting at my desk. So that way it stays charged and keeps going. But if you need to, I haven't had any problems switching between wired and wireless. Um, but remember, you need to do a really clean install and make sure that the install is actually working for you. So I haven't had any of those issues at all. So overall, pretty good to go there. Um, don't ask me about polling rates and all this other shit because I don't really feel like most of the people need to be changing those kind of settings. Your most casual people. I think you're just following in the footsteps of some YouTuber that told you to do that shit. Um, it's not going to be like, hey, I purchased this controller and somehow I went from, you know, only getting 12 kills inside Modern Warfare to now I'm getting 40 kills. That shit's not happening. If you were getting 40 kills before with the controls you were using, then you're getting 40 kills now. If you were getting 12, you're still going to be getting 12. It is not going to, this is not going to change anything in that guards. That's the skill. This is, that's just the truth. So don't expect any of that. Like I hate to see you see those type of things where it's like, hey, this controller helped me get 40 kills and, and drop the nuke. That's just not happening. It's just not happening. It's just not true. Overall, I think it's a good controller, especially if you're an RPG player and you need to be able to sit back, relax and kick up and play a long session of Lost Ark, play a long session of Diablo, play a long session of uh, Black Desert or whatever game it is that your snuff is, Guild Wars, uh, whatever it is. I think this is a, a worthwhile controller to pick up. Um, let me know if you want to see any specific settings or how to do anything specifically in, in with the controller that you might be that you might be concerned about. I can show you guys that stuff around. Um, hope you guys enjoy the video. Until next time, peace.